Uh, hello, my name is Tim Wise. I'm the Deputy Director at the Global Development and Environment Institute at Tufts University. And this evening at the university, we're hosting a joint book launch for two exciting new books on globalization and economic development, uh, Bad Samaritans, the Myth of Free Trade and the Secret History of Capitalism is by Cambridge University economist Hajun Chang, um, and The Enclave Economy for an Investment and Sustainable Development in Mexico's Silicon Valley is from our institute's own Kevin P. Gallagher, who is also a professor at Boston University, um, written with his co-author Lubazarski. Um, we, before this event, we had the chance to sit down with Drs. Chang and Gallagher for a few minutes to talk about their work and uh, hear about what they've, uh, what they've come up with on their books. So we wanted to ask them a few questions here. Uh, we'll start with uh, Hajun Chang. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can start, Dr. Chang, by telling mm -hmm. us what the central thesis of your book is. Yeah. Well, in the last uh, 25 years, uh, the world has been dominated by the so-called neoliberal ideology, which uh, has uh, almost religious belief in free trade and free market. And the book uh, destroys this myth that all the rich countries, all the successful countries, starting from 18th century Britain down to 20th century China and India, have somehow all succeeded through free trade and free market policy. It uh, really shows that uh, the policies that these countries use in order to get where they are today is almost opposite of what they are recommending to and, and sometimes even even forcing upon developing countries today. Uh, Dr. Chang, it seems as though the some of the policies you're recommending are a return to the protectionism of uh, what were considered failed policies of the past for developing countries. How do you respond to that? Well, that, that's another myth uh, to destroy. Because uh, this notion that uh, in the 60s and 70s, the developing countries used these uh, protection sorry, protectionist policies and miserably failed is another myth that uh, the neoliberals have been using. You know, the, the developing countries in the 60s and 70s grew at about 3% uh, on average in per capita terms. In the last 25 years, when they tried uh, free trade uh, free market policies, they have actually grown at uh, half that rate. So where is the, the failure that these people are talking about? Actually, what has failed is uh, the neoliberal free trade free market policy. I know that in one of the interesting things about your new book um, is that you you look at the role of culture in economic mm. development in one of your chapters. Um, do you think there are cultures that are more suited to economic development, as some people argue? Well, if I had that view, I probably wouldn't have written that chapter because uh, that's the prevailing myth. Uh, what I do in the book is uh, to show that you know, the ch chapter on culture is uh, provocatively titled Lazy Japanese and Thieving Germans. And I, I show all this uh, historical evidence uh, that, uh, that uh, suggests that uh, in the old days, when <laughs> Japan and Germany were poor countries, foreigners from rich countries would uh, go to those countries and say that these countries are not developing because uh, these people are lazy and dishonest and uh, corrupt and uh, incapable of rational thinking. So my argument is that actually culture is uh, not an explanation of uh, underdevelopment. If anything, it's uh, the other way around. And uh, therefore, the, this uh, argument that some cultures are the more suited to economic development is actually co uh, getting the causality ro the wrong way around. To close, how, how would you say that international trade policies would need to change? Well, basically what I argue for is uh, what I call the asymmetric protectionism. So the richer countries uh, should be allowed to protect less than the poorer countries. And the poorer countries that uh, should be given the chance to protect and nurture their industries so that uh, they could get out of this uh, low return primary commodities and uh, the labor intensive industries. And without uh, that kind of uh, systematic approach, uh, you will always have the, the rich countries uh, twisting the arms of uh, the poor countries, using their aid budget, using their influence in the World Bank and the IMF and uh, get the concessions that, uh, which uh, harm the development prospect of these countries. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin Gallagher, it's good to talk to you about your new book, The Enclave Economy. Okay. Dr. Gallagher, maybe you could start by just telling us the central tenet of your book. Central tenet of our book is that having a, a policy that is solely driven towards attracting foreign investment into your economy is not a development policy for a developing economy. We looked at this in the context of Mexico and NAFTA. 
and found that although Mexico was able to attract a lot of foreign direct investment into the prized high technology sector, it was divorced from the rest of the economy. We call the book The Enclave Economy because foreign investment came, but it was completely divorced from the rest of the economy and is part of the reason why the Mexican economic growth has been so sluggish in recent years. Has, you focused on one particular part of Mexico, and maybe you could say a little bit more about what you found in terms of the limited development impacts there. Sure. You really hope that foreign investment is not only going to come, but it's going to create what we call backward linkages, that the firms that move to the country are going to hire some domestic companies, upgrade their uh, productivity, and create demand for their products. And you're also hoping that the foreign firms are going to bring new technologies, new environmental practices that are going to what we call spill over into the domestic economy. We found that that didn't occur. 95% um, of all the production in the foreign plants in Mexico, Mexico's Silicon Valley, which is, called, is the region of Guadalajara in the central western state of Jalisco, 95% of production is imported uh, from other countries. What's more, 90% of all production is then exported out to another country. That's why we call it the enclave economy. If uh, U.S. trade policy uh, and Mexican policy needed to change to, uh, to try to better promote development in, in, out of foreign investment, what would you recommend? I'm glad you asked uh, about U.S. policy and Mexican policy, because in many ways our book is what happens when the bad Samaritans get their way. And the bad Samaritans in this case have been policymakers both in the United States and in Mexico. Um, in, for the U.S. case, I'll speak about the United States since I'm a U.S. citizen. The United States has to have a much broader view of, of its trade policy. Our current trade policy is stifling the ability of developing countries to grow their economies. What we don't realize is that more than 50% of all of our exports now go to countries outside of the OECD. So when those countries don't grow, even if you don't care about development uh, from your heart or something like that, it's in our national interest for those economies to grow. And right now, trade policy in the United States benefits a select concentration of U.S. industries. And the losers are losers across the developing world and people dissipated across America. A uh, leader in the United States is going to have to put together a, a much better forward-thinking coalition that thinks about growth outside of the economy and how that can help our own economy here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you can find out more about both these books, these authors, and uh, the Global Development Environment Institute at uh, www.gdae.org.